proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another in the series of broadcasts presented by your War Department titled, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present as the star, Mr. James Craig, in our play, Take My Advice, an original story by Tom Petty with music by Eddie Scrivanek. It's Sunday night, and Joe O'Neill and Leslie Gray have just returned to Leslie's apartment after seeing a movie. They're fellow workers on the news. Come on in, Joe. It's early. Are you sure you don't mind? Of course not, silly. I hate being alone. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Miss Gray. Oh, Joe O'Neill. You act as if we'd just been introduced. What's wrong about you and me? You seem to enjoy being with me, and I like you, but... Well, nothing seems to, well, happen to us. Oh, I guess it must be my fault. I must be a big bore. Oh, it's nothing of the sort. You're not a bore. Joe, you're the most popular reporter on the news. Are, are you afraid of me? Well, of course not. It's just that you work in there with Mrs. White, and, well, I read her column, and... Oh, you mean her advice to the love lawn. Be courteous, be polite, click your heels, and bow when you tell your girl good night. Carolyn's living back in the gay 90s, Joe. I take it you don't approve of the old-fashioned courtships. Well, no more than you would approve of the 1890s style of reporting, Joe. Oh, I don't know. The old-timers were a little slow in getting started. But when they got going, they turned in real stories. I suppose that red-headed city editor is more your style. Jim Hendrix? Well, <laughs> Jim has his points. I saw him trying to kiss you yesterday. I'm sorry, I walked in the office at the wrong time. Oh, you barged in at the right time. Joe, I believe you're jealous. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm just confused. Well, do you want me to try to straighten you out? About Jim Hendricks? Mm hmm. Jim and a lot of other things. Oh, sorry. Well, some other time. I'm afraid I'm keeping you awake right now. I'll see you at the office tomorrow. Oh, you sure will, with my nose to the grindstone. I've got to do Carolyn's column for a week. She's taking a vacation. You mean you're going to answer the letters to Mrs. White? Mm, I'm going to make a stab at it, pal, and I'm going to try to be honest for a change. Mm, that should make interesting reading. <laughs> I guess I'd better be going now. Oh, and thank you, Joe, for the dinner and movie and everything. Good night, Leslie. You sure you haven't forgotten anything? Well, guess not. I've got my hat. Good night. <laughs> what a guy. I wonder if he could be handing me a line. Ah, uh, Leslie, how's the column going? Joe! Oh, Joe, you no good loafer. Where have you been for the last two days? Oh, around here and there, working on a story. Well, it's about time you dropped in. Well, you seem to be doing all right. What do you mean by that crack? Jim Hendricks. I don't see how he finds time to give out assignments when he spends all of his time with you. Oh, I suppose you let me do the worrying about Jim. Who's worrying about me? Oh, seems that Joe is. He thinks you spend too much time coaching the substitute lovelorn editor. Yeah? And what does the lovelorn editor think about it? Hmm. <laughs> She's hoping she can get a column out of it. You're uh, beginning uh, to sound like a tough newspaper woman. And you're making noises like a human being. Maybe I've been wrong about you, Joe. Could be you have, Leslie. Uh, while we're on the subject, Joe, old man, I've been doing a spot of worrying about you. Yeah? What have I done? You've been spending too much time in the managing editor's office. You know, I sort of like to know what's going on in there. Well, I have an idea... Him, he will tell you if he wants you to know. It has nothing to do with your job. Ah, well, that's quite a relief. But if you don't watch your step, it's likely to have something to do with yours. Maybe you've got something there. Now, get out. I want to talk to Leslie. Why, Joe? Look, something's happened to you, bub, and I don't like it. <laughs> I think maybe I do. Goodbye, Jim. I'll see you later, Lou. Wow. What's happened to you, mister? 
A lot of things. Now, come on, it's after 6 o'clock. We've got places to go. <laughs> well, where's the fire? No fire. It's a picnic on Lake Allen. Oh. I'm going to row you over there. Well, okay, Skipper. Let's shove off. <laughs> We pause briefly from our story, Take My Advice, starring James Craig as Joe O'Neill, to bring you an important message from your War Department. A few years ago, how many young men would choose the field of science for a career? In fact, how many had the opportunity to enter this work? Very few. Today, that has all changed. Your new regular army offers that opportunity to every eligible man between the ages of 17 and 34 who is ambitious for education. The new regular army is a career not only of national defense, but of scientific advancement. Today's soldier is a technician educated and skilled in a special trade or job. He is part of an organization continually working and experimenting in scientific fields. Besides being a trained technician, he is a well-paid man. The new revised pay scale, retirement benefits after only 20 and up to 30 years, and other advantages make this career financially inviting. Ask your local Army recruiting officer today about the advantages of joining the regular Army. And now, Act Two of Take My Advice, starring James Craig as Joe O'Neill. Well, here we are again. Joe and Leslie are on Lake Island. Let's join them. The old Williams cabin. How do you like it? Mm, fine. Sure looks dark and deserted for a party. Oh, well, I guess we're early. Oh. I'll light the lantern. Looks like the fire's ready. Just needs a match. Mm, how cozy. Oh, Joe, it's delightful. I love to gaze into a fire. I'd rather gaze into your lovely eyes. There's firelight there. And stars, too. You never said anything like that before. Oh, Joe. Oh. That was a surprise. You've never kissed me before. I've been wanting to ever since I met you. So right now I'm going to make up for lost time. <laughs> well, that, that's enough, Joe. You haven't lost that much time. Where, uh, where are the other people who are coming to this party? Does it take more than two to make a party, darling? Oh, oh come on, Joe. Out with it. Okay, honey. You and I are the only two on this island tonight. Oh. It's our private party. Why, Joe O'Neill, you... Well, you're awfully sure of yourself. For once in my life, I am. I'm sure of everything except you. Oh, you can say that again. I don't like tricks. What's the matter, darling? Afraid of me? You better drop the darling. I, I don't think I like it. Who helped you think up this... this abduction? It's no abduction. And what is it? Oh, sort of an experiment in human relations. Mm. You know, boy meets girl, boy kisses girl. But boy doesn't get girl. Uh-uh, not this time. If this is your idea of being romantic, you I... You let me kiss you. You even kiss me back. Well, that was before I found out I'd been taken for a boat ride. I thought when a girl kissed a boy... You've been doing entirely too much thinking. A girl doesn't marry every man she kisses. Well, I should hope not. Anyhow, I hadn't asked you to marry me. Oh! Yet. Well, that does it. Now I know I don't like you. You've had your fun, but the party's over, mister. Leslie, wait. What are you going to do? I'm going home. It's time to stop playing games. I'm not playing games, and you're not going home. Well, I'd like to see you try to stop me. You, you act like a crazy man. Sure. Sure, I'm crazy. Crazy in love. And it's your fault. Quit it, Joe. Quit trying to kiss me, you... You wolf. Leslie, honey, you've got to listen to me. I'm going home. Come back here. What do you know about boats? Do you want to drown? I don't care if I do. That's the way you feel about it. I'll take you home right now. You'll not take me home until I'm good and ready. Well, I'll be... I give up. Oh, you... You mean that, Joe? You heard me. Well, you don't have to take that attitude... When it's all your fault. Yes, I guess it is. I didn't have much heart for this idea anyway. You were right. I don't understand. About my not being myself. I guess this caveman stuff isn't for me. 
I'm sorry, Leslie. Really and truly sorry? Crushed my heart. And why did you do it? Oh, it seemed the only way to find out about you and me. I guess I'm all mixed up. What are you going to do now? Take you home. Then you can forget all about this evening. Me too. But I don't want to forget. Oh, do you have to give up so easily? Now, wait a minute. You're getting me more bewildered than ever. Would you mind telling me exactly what do you want? I think it would help if I knew what you want. I thought I'd made that perfectly clear. But you didn't seem to take the idea. Well, I didn't till I found out you tricked me into coming here and then uh, you turned into a caveman and... That part of it wasn't my idea. Then whose was it? Yours, you little minx. Oh! Didn't you write this? Oh, well, that's a galley proof of tomorrow's column. My, my love going column. Read it. Go ahead, read it. Dear Mr. Bewilder, there's only one way to convince some girls. Get her off alone and take her in your arms and... <laughs> Where did you get this? In the composing room. Oh, I've got a right to it. Oh? The advice was written to me. You're... Mr. Bewildered in person. <laughs> oh, how was I to know the treatment would be tried out on me? <laughs> then your theory of a whirlwind courtship didn't apply to you. Oh, well, maybe it does, Joe. Joe, what are you going to do? Follow your advice. Kiss you again and again. How'd you like to be the wife of the new political editor of the news? Never write another lovelorn column? I'd love it, darling. Come here. <laughs> This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our Proudly We Hail story starring James Craig. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. Do you remember when the conception of a scientist was a wild-eyed man in a long white smock and horn-rimmed glasses who puttered around huge electrical machines and poured liquids into test tubes? Well, I'll tell you about a group of scientists today, over 900,000 of them, who look nothing like this. They're young men dressed in neat-fitting O.D. clothing with the insignia of the U.S. Army. Yes, your new regular army is an organization of forward, scientifically trained men. They work continually to further scientific development in all fields. You are familiar with the wonders of penicillin. You are aware of the amazing new surgical methods army doctors have developed. You've heard of the new clinical recording camera that can photograph surgical operations at close range and is especially adaptable to eye surgery. Every day you read about new developments in the field of aviation, machines that can fly seven times the speed of sound, planes that operate at long ranges with no human hand at the controls, and radio-controlled rockets. These are accomplishments of the new regular Army. Army developed, too, are the sniper scope, which throws an invisible beam of light, enabling one to see in the dark, the use of radar for forecasting weather, the ENIAC, a complex electronic machine that makes calculations which would require thousands of man-hours. Advancements in the field of communications. These are but the forerunners of countless new discoveries by regular Army technicians. Any intelligent, ambitious man between 17 and 34 may join. The Army will train you in any one of numerous trades and mechanical skills. For further information about opportunities in the regular Army, go to your nearest Army recruiting station. Thank you, James Craig, for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. Mm -hmm.